So it's the final day of our Community Awareness Week where throughout the week we've been out and about visiting different activities that the Shops Foundation are involved in uh, in partnership with all the Shop Town Football Club. Uh, it's a lovely sunny morning and uh, today I'm with Mick Quinn uh, from Quintessential who's a sports therapist. We'll be talking to him to find out more about uh, walking football. And as you can see going on behind us right now, um, we've got uh, a game going on. So earlier in the week, uh, we were out seeing uh, the younger supporters at the holiday camps and the school, uh, the school courses that we do. Today's very much the other end of the spectrum where some of our more mature um, uh, supporters and friends are here. Um, Mick, thanks for joining us this morning. No um, you, you've really been a, a pioneer in the development of, of walking football. Um, for someone who, who doesn't know, just explain a little bit more about what walking football is and, and who's it for. Um, well, it's really aimed at older older people, trying to get them a bit fitter. Um, I'm a sports therapist, so um, I work with a lot of like professional football teams and stuff like that. And when people are injured, the, the biggest problem is getting them back into playing again. Just walking and fitness is okay, but getting them back playing a sport that they want to do. But it's really important that you do the medical side of it. So walking football is aimed at getting people back, um, you know, moving about. It improves their balance, it improves their, you know, their, their mind really. Because a lot of these guys, as you say, behind us, there's two of the boys on here at 82. And they play football twice a week with us. Um, but it's, um, it's very controlled because uh, there's three touches. So it means there's not a lot of tackling from behind. We don't allow any heading, so it's safe there's no head knocks. Um, it's competitive enough to get them up and get the hearts moving. But usually in the first year, um, the people lose weight, they notice the difference in their muscles and the balance. I love coming down. There's a few older shop shirts in the background. Looking at them, I, I, I'm guessing that you don't have to audition to play, so it's no. mi mixed standard. Yeah. Um, is that it's, to anyone? Yeah. It is. It's, um, we section into male only um, at our club, but there is female only clubs as well. Um, because of the medical implications, you can't mix the sexes. Yeah. Um, when we have the training sessions, it's quite a mixed bag of ages. When we play competitive games, it'll be an age section, so there'll be an over 50 section or over 65s. But you don't need to be a good player, you just need to have a good attitude and a pair of um, Astro Tough training shoes, you know. Is it right you've been inv invited to speak at a, a FIFA conference coming up? Tell I'm, us about I'm, that. I'm speaking at the, the FIFA medical conference uh, run by Isaac Kinetic. At, um, about walking football? About walking football, wow. about the, the medical implications. Yeah. Um, for example, after the menopause with ladies, they lose 22% more bone density than right. men do. So with these sessions um, that, that we're running with the foundation, there is the opportunity that people play in that safe environment because you've got the rules in place. You've, you've got a, a sports I've, therapist here, so that's reassuring uh, the, for some. Yeah. The, the, that side of it is really important. I mean, anyone can just pick a wee bit of a land and start having a six-a-side competition. But I've got my defibrillator yeah. at the side of the pitch. I've got yeah. my, my van behind us there with crutches in it. And if we need to go to Frimley Park, we'll yeah. be there. And half the time it would take for an ambulance. That's the aspect that's... Um, I'm a bit like the old swan in the water. They don't see the feet underneath doing all the other bits. But at the end of the day, as long as they're all enjoying it, getting a bit fitter, and they've got a lot of friends and, and they're older age, you know. And one so. thing I wanted to talk about as well, so my favourite uh, walking football team play down here. So you run several teams when, when you're having uh, organised uh, tournaments and go abroad, which we'll come on to. Mm -hmm. But here it is also home to the older shots and uh, so we have a team made up of older shot supporters right. and some familiar faces. Um, but, but you also have some older shot connections, don't you? Um, yeah, well, when I worked in the Football League, um, I had quite a few I actually won the league, uh, League 2 with Brentford. Yeah. And then I was at Wickham and yeah. won promotion there. And who you were at Wickham with? Um, I was at Wickham with Gary Waddock. Yeah, okay. And uh, I was at Brentford with Andy Scott, yeah, another okay. former manager. Yeah. Yeah. And then I went to Crawley for a yeah. little while. Yeah. And um, it was uh, Richie Barker okay. who was yeah. in charge yeah. there. So all the wee connections. Yeah. So as a club, uh, you're also involved um, in uh, some charity work. And obviously, coming to walking football, you make new friends. But as, as all, all the people are a little more mature, we lose people along the way as well. But you've done something about that, haven't you? Um, well, we've lost quite a few people to cancers um, over the last kind of few years. Um, the local um, cancer help uh, people that are after care and everything as well as Tuttle. So we always try to do a wee bit to help them throughout the year. Um, we organise an annual tournament down here at Frimley Lodge 
and uh, invite eight teams along, charge the boys £10 a head and do various hidden teams and stuff. But we usually only get about £1,000 a time for, for the charity. And so can I ask you then, when are the sessions? Because I think one of the nice things is you've got three different locations, four different sessions, so there's always going to be a time, hopefully, that you can play. So when do the sessions actually take place? The, um, the morning sessions are uh, 10 to uh, 11 at Frimley Lodge Park. Um, we do that on a Tuesday and a Friday, and there's mostly the guys that are retired. It's, it's probably a little bit slower than the evening sessions. The evenings we do Monday night at um, Tomlinscote School and Thursday night at Sam Cody School. Um, although, because we've only got the one pitch numbers are limited there, uh, we have to kind of get a maximum, about 21. So I have a wee WhatsApp group and the boys text me, let me know who's coming. But um, you don't need to, you don't need to book, pre-book it, you just give me a wee text and come along. And, uh, we sort of, uh, and if you are if you were thinking, if you were interested in coming along and being one of these uh, fine elite athletes, mm-hmm. but you weren't sure about it, obviously you can get in touch with the, the Shots Foundation Shots and Jamie, Foundation. but they could just come along and have a have a little watch at one of those times, that's yeah. okay as well? Absolutely, yeah. Or, yeah. Um, my, yeah. my number's online as well okay. with the Foundation, yeah. just give me a call and okay. we'll arrange for you to come and try out. But um, you shouldn't be embarrassed about whether you're not fit or whether you're not a great player, as you can see behind us, it's a... A mixed bag, yeah. and uh, again, it's it's you're never going to get an international camp yeah. playing down here. You just don't enjoy it. So talking of having fun, and it, it looks like they're having a great time here. Um, you also arrange trips abroad, so so they get to travel away. And we've got a little exclusive coming up in a in a moment uh, about the older shots uh, and the tournament. But tell us about the tournaments and how they work. Um, it happened to be well by um, the boys were getting used to playing each other and we decided we were going to take them ab- abroad for a for a, an adventure if you like. Um, I used to be a holiday in my previous life and I uh, find it quite easy organising hotels and buses. So we we done a wee tour abroad and um, it was very popular and we started getting requests from other teams and it's developed now, it's quite a big deal. So we do um, a Spanish Masters in May in uh, Cambrils and um, we also do an Italian one later on in the year. But there's 28 teams going to this one in May. Um, we have again the different age sections with the 65s and the over 50s. And there's... And you've got a little exclusive for us. Go on, tell me, who will all the shop be playing uh, in May this year? Well, we made the draw earlier in the week and um, all the shot are in a qualifying group with uh, a bro from Scotland, a pretty good team. So a bro, um, yeah. Former winners, Bracknell Blues. Bracknell, yeah. And then they're actually kicking off in the tournament against Barcelona. So they're starting the tournament. The inaugural game will be Aldershot v Barcelona. You heard it here first. <laughs> Mick, thanks so much for joining us. Um, I will leave you because they're getting a bit grumpy over there uh, about, I think it was an argument, a decision just now. We'll leave you to get back, but thanks for joining us. So we'll be back tomorrow. It's match day tomorrow. Uh, Shots at home to Oldham and the Shots Foundation will be there um, because it's her game too. So we're supporting that initiative uh, and we're looking forward to tomorrow.